Hello, this is a quick video to demonstrate one method I use to deal with troublesome link creation in Register 360. You see here I have two separate walks imported where I've scanned the first floor of a shopping mall. And both walks are about 11 minutes long. And there's an area of significant overlap in common between the two walks. This open area has a lot of nice floors, walls, ceilings, planes, there's a water feature, there's a coffee uh, coffee shop kiosk, so there should be plenty of nice features to allow for successful link creation. So it always helps to create a waypoint close to each other, and we'll jump into our visual alignment. The first thing I like to do is to pick a nice common feature, so there's a bend in the wall here, and you place this over top of each other. If you ever wonder how precise you need to be when placing two clouds on top of each other in this visual alignment tool, that's actually dictated by here in your cloud to cloud, the search radius. If you have a half a foot search radius, you need to get the two lined up better than half a foot. So it's not it's not perfect, but it should be better than half a foot. And when you look inside view, I actually had the reference puck that you start and stop walks with the BLK to go in the same location for both walks. I started and stopped both walks in this coffee shop. So that actually allowed the verticality of the two to be nicely aligned automatically because zero was in the same location. So now we'll say join and optimize. And as you can guess, it's going to fail. Hmm. No, I don't want to keep a link that's not good. So let's go back to our top view. When you use a sensor like the blk to go in an indoor environment, you're collecting far more data than you usually do outdoors because when you're outdoors, roughly half of your view, you don't get any returns. It's sky or it's too far away. So indoors, you get hallways, corridors, rooms. That there's a lot of data that you're getting return on. So these hallways are going to be more dense than this area of overlap because it's larger. If you review your link criteria, I have a minimum overlap for a green link of 25% and a minimum for a yellow of 15%. And even though this looks like a large room, it might not be 15% of the data, and that's why it's failing. So the first step, you can just quickly select your fencing tool here in the link creation Just drag a window across your common area. Wait for it to select. And we'll say delete outside. So now this routine is going to run the computation on only what's remaining. for the computation to finish running. It's still not viable. Well, that's annoying. At this point, I am going to keep the link. It's not, I'm not going to keep it as final. Now you can select the link, and because we have a rough estimate of how these two align, I'm going to jump into split view. Now when you're in split view, because we have the initial alignment known, when you pan, 
both waypoints are synchronized. So I'm going to pick common elements in both waypoints. And one thing to be careful when you're picking this is, for instance, if there is an element that is between you and this corner, make sure you're actually picking what you hope to pick. And I'll show you a way you can check in a second. One nice thing about this split view routine is it really helps overcome elements of tilt. You don't have to try to analyze your tilt in the elevation view. Now one good way to make sure you've got the same three common elements is you jump out to your cloud view. Unconstrain yourself from the waypoint view and you see, yes, I've got the same there. And sometimes when you're picking through a tree or uh, there's a person between your waypoint and where you're trying to pick, you can accidentally pick the wrong range even though you had the right alignment. So I'm going to say update. Now it's recomputing a cloud to cloud. Hey, now we've got a good link. 7 millimeters with 70% overlap. I hope this helps you solve any issues you've had with link creation. Thanks.